This news update is brought to you by. You gotta pray for Christmas. If you're feeling lucky, you could win some money. Pray for Christmas. Two hundred thousand dollars in cash and prizes. With Lime, you could win some money. Okay. It's Lime's Christmas lottery. Two hundred and fifty winners this Christmas. Oh yeah. Sign up or upgrade to super fast broadband, Lime TV, e-billing, a data plan, top up $15, purchase a handset or text 4263 to enter. It's Thursday, December the 4th, 2014, and this is the Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. We begin with news that the Barbados Workers' Union will, by next Wednesday, have compiled a list of all Royal Bank of Canada employees who have accepted voluntary separation packages. Following a meeting last night with workers to discuss the bank's restructuring and possible layoffs, the union also announced that the list would comprise workers who have opted for early retirement. Acting Assistant General Secretary of the BWU, Dwayne Paul, also told reporters his organization would be monitoring the company to ensure staff members were not overworked. No numbers. We haven't been given any numbers from the bank as yet, as the, as the total amount of numbers, sorry, total amount of persons they're looking at. We are being told as well by the staff that the bank is going to be engaging in a voluntary separation program. Uh, this when is starting, man. The program has been announced, uh, which commenced on, on Thursday of last week. So the persons from, as from, from Thursday last week could indicate their willingness to be part of the exercise. The exercise is in two parts. We have a voluntary reset which covers all, all staff. And we also have an early retirement uh, package which focuses on staff who are within two and a half years of retirement. Meanwhile, some of the 124 employees at the United Commercial Auto Works Limited, UCAL, may be placed on the breadline as early as next month. Shop steward and director Richard Newton tells Barbados today it's all part of restructuring measures in order to keep the company in business. Newton says UCAL not only has an overall debt of $8 million that's growing, but it's also not making enough money to pay wages and salaries. Well, the problem we have is that we are getting less work on the transport board. We need to work on our external work, but we cannot do that because we are not playing our suppliers. So that's the problem we have. But how much money is owed to the suppliers? The suppliers is off over $113,000 in our suppliers. You're between a, a rock and a, a hard rock place. and a hard stone. We own that insurance $2.6 million, VAT $2.8 million. We owe PYU income tax $633,000. We owe corporation tax about $708,000. And we are not, but they know that transport is pay us, we cannot pay the rent for transport board. UCAL is primarily responsible for repairing the buses of the state-owned transport board. If government buys into a reproductive technology initiative by two visiting Mexican doctors, Barbados could soon be in a position to export large numbers of its indigenous black belly sheep. Doctors Raimundo Rangel Santos and Jose Garcia Muniz said Barbados' black belly ram are fit and healthy enough to produce the necessary semen for a countrywide artificial insemination program that will rapidly multiply the number of sheep on the island. We have identified already some things that needs to be done, and uh, I mean we will be more than happy to to come back again and uh, not just following with uh, visits, but uh, developing some expertise here, training sure. some of technicians here, so they can next time, uh, maybe two three years Seven. time, we will come back again. But then we will see these people doing some of these technologies. Sure. The two Mexican doctors were among other officials from the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, or IECA, who toured a number of island farms yesterday to get a preliminary look at sheep stock before going into talks with the government of Barbados. 
And Minister of Education Ronald Jones is voicing his views about the negative trend where men expose their underwear in public. In fact, while delivering the feature address at the Grally Adams School Speech Day and Prize Giving Ceremony yesterday, Jones said he would like to ban all persons in this country who show him their underwear. I don't want to see what's going on. We call it slavery in the world of days. Today, the same slavery a lot of near my and we shall be very short of our beloveds. I have no interest in that. So how many young people, or those who are not so young, or the some who are not so young, who believe that they should be raised like fools? Not you. There's no regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power. Welcome back with news from the region that strike action is looming large over Trinidad's petroleum company, Petrotrim. Members of the Oil Field Workers Trade Union have given their union the go ahead to take the industrial action over a deadlock in wages and salaries negotiations. OWT President Ansel Roger, in accepting his membership's mandate, called on citizens to bear with the workers as they fight for the betterment of them, their families, and their country. And if it is that you are not prepared to take 000, zero, zero, are you prepared to take local legal strike action to ensure that you get what you deserve a proper and decent wage yeah! Are you prepared to strike? And finally, on the international scene, the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, has called for peaceful protests against a grand jury's decision not to press criminal charges against a white police officer in the death of an unarmed black man who he put into a chokehold, a practice banned by the New York Police Department. While acknowledging that people would express their views over the case, he hopes it would be done in a constructive and peaceful way. People will express themselves now as they should in a democracy. I ask everyone to listen to what Ben Garner said and what Eric Garner's son said as well. If you really want to dignify the life of Eric Garner, you will do so through peaceful protest. You will work relentlessly for change. You will not sully his name with violence or vandalism. That doesn't bring us closer to a better community. The only thing that's ever worked is peaceful protest, non-violent social activism. It's the only thing that has ever worked. And the Garner family has made that abundantly clear. Michael Brown's family made that abundantly clear. People should listen to those we say we stand in solidarity with, fulfill their wishes. And that's our Barbados Today morning news update. We'll be back again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screen plate supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get all the latest news and the sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day. This news update is brought to you by... I won! For me to me for me uh, uh. Yes. You don't need speakers, right? Upgrade to win every week with Line. Sign up for Line TV or broadband or purchase an iPhone 6 or Samsung Note 4. Upgrade Christmas with Lime.